So once you've got a WordPress site, you can then add e-commerce to it via WooCommerce plugin. But then we need to see what sort of power we're, we're dealing with here. So if we look at the site, the, uh, if we visit site like this, we've got some brand new items, home, cart, checkout, my account, sample page perhaps, and shop. So we've got some new pages that our site is made out of, specifically shop, my account, checkout, and cart. We've also got this whole functionality of being able to have a shopping cart and a checkout and everything. So let's see that by going back to the dashboard. We're going to see several new things. The first thing is on the dashboard, you get uh, this brand new top area about designing your store. That'll be something you'll do later so that you can uh, you know, change a little bit of the look for it. But then you scroll down, further down, you will then see a brand new section that that looks very nice, the how much money am I making panel right there. So that'll show you what you've sold. That'll show you what products are, what orders are processing and out of stock and all of that. So here's the thing. We use e-commerce sites all the time and they work so seamlessly. I'm going to buy a product and then I'm going to put my credit card or debit card and then I wait and I get it at home. Well, that stuff is easy as a buyer. But as a seller, now you have to be aware of several things. When someone pays for your product, now you have to deal with, is, let's say the, the example of actual goods. I have to get that item off the shelf or out of my garage or out of wherever I'm storing it. I have to then put it in um, you know, the shipping container, so I need boxes. I could go to the post office and get boxes. Or I can get a box from the back of you know, Costco or whatever. I need some box to put it in. And then I need to pay for shipping and I need to send it through the mail. And that's not the cost of a stamp. That's got a shipping cost. And then here I've also got to be dealing with um, there's an order that I'm still processing and then I've shipped it. Or there's something on hold or I have to have deal with something out of stock. So there's just a lot of details as, a, as, a, as an e-tailer that I have to deal with. And the first time you look at these things, it seems complicated. But through some guidance and practice, you'll see that it's not as complex as it might seem. In addition to this new stuff we see in the dashboard, we have a whole new WooCommerce section. Just click on that. Click on the name WooCommerce. And then this has a bunch of subsections, orders, coupons, reports, settings, etc. There are no orders at the moment, but they would all be listing here about who has, pay, who has paid for your item, whose credit card got rejected, whose uh, sale went through properly. I cannot see any example just yet. It's empty. But this is the screen that's going to show you everything about if I'm mailing them their product, this will show what their address is and their phone number and all of that as a, as a customer. Coupons, that should make sense, is where I set up coupons. Reports, I want to go look at deeper reports of what I've sold. Again, some of these are, there's nothing really to look at here. But it, it will tell you your, your stats, your data as you sell stuff. Settings, there's a lot of settings here that you could look at. I'll skip it for the moment. But under settings here is where I would fully set up my payment information, my shipping, all that stuff. We'll get to that later. Status, uh, nothing meaningful here under status. It just tells you, is your site running properly? If you're having trouble that it doesn't work, let's say I'm not around to perhaps help you set something up. Where might you go to get help with your WordPress or WooCommerce not working? WooCommerce.com. What's this? Breaking Bad fans, you move. Oh, never mind. Okay, so WooCommerce.com. So here's where you would go to go get help in case your WooCommerce is not working. <clears throat> so that's status. Extensions. Okay, here is where you can then see these sorts of plugins that add to this plugin. I want to add subscriptions, memberships. And here's where we see that, okay, WooCommerce is totally free to set up and start using. And some of these more advanced things, they might have a cost. And $199, $249 sounds like a lot, but again, it takes money to make money. 
once you've set up your infrastructure and start selling, that initial investment is recuperated. Now, again, I'm not a tax professional and I'm not giving any advice, but some of these things could be tax deductible and so forth. They could be itemized and so forth, but you need to check with a tax professional. But yes, some of these things do cost some amount of investment. And what else? Product, advanced product search and advanced reports and all of that. So that's just information. If we go to products, this part is totally for free. And this part is one of the most important things. Products. I want to actually sell things. So let's go here to the products. All products. There's no products yet. It'll say create product and so forth. It'll also tell you what about if you want to do memberships or bundles or other th other things. Go to these extensions. Okay, good information. And you will probably get these messages at the top here. In my case, I see WooCommerce Stripe. Um, it's saying if you're using Stripe, it may impact the appearance of checkout. We're not using it at the moment, so that doesn't matter. You may never use Stripe, so that may never matter. You might. You might close that if you want. Then we've got, um, your store does not appear to be using a secure connection. We highly recommend setting it up with HTTPS to keep your customer data secure. This is something important to think about for the future. And it doesn't matter for us right now because we're not on the real internet. But if my real website was victor.com or victorsbakery.com slash shop or whatever, um, I would want my customers to feel safe by having the little um, the little lockup there. Even something from like a Google search. This has security nowadays. That HTTPS for security, that little lock, our site does not have it. So it's insecure. And that's a big deal, especially when I'm trying to sell products. Nowadays, these web browsers, especially Chrome, will really jump jump at you and tell you, hey, you're in an, you're an insecure site. Are you sure you want to go here? And for a lot of people, they'll say, that doesn't sound good. Take me back. And then they leave your site. Well, this security comes from setting up an SSL certificate. And there's free ones and paid ones. But this is something that we'll talk about later. And this is something that's important when you go on the real internet so that your site is secure. This is something that you get out of your provider, like GoDaddy, Bluehost, etc. We'll cover it later. And it gives you a reminder, you might want to uh, set this up at some point. Uh, what else here? Okay, let's go over to categories on the left side. We can organize our products by categories and tags or attributes, different ways to for people to find your product, to sort your products. To find what they need. So let's do this section here first under categories. Um, a product will always go to a default category of uncategorized, which is the worst one, because there's just no organization, there's no, there's no setup, it does not, uh, it also hurts, for example, your SEO, your search engine optimization, other topics we'll cover later. So we want to create at least one category for our products. And the idea here is how we organize these things. Let's say the example, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to sell chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to sell um, raisin muffins, raisin bran muffins, and um, birthday cakes. So those three things. One is a type of a cookie. One is a type of a muffin. One is a type of a cake. Well, those are your categories. Because in cookies, I'm selling chocolate chip cookies as well as you know, mint cookies as well as snickerdoodles, as well as whatever. Different kinds of cookies, so they're in a category of cookies. Different kinds of cakes, they're in a category of cakes. We can have subcategories, uh, like over here it gives the example. For example, you have jazz, let's say you're selling music, you have jazz music. Then you have also bebop and big band. Big band and bebop are types of jazz, they're subcategories. So I can have, for example, cookies. I'm selling cookies. But then I'm selling, you know, like gluten-free cookies. 
and then those that actually taste good. So it can have in two different categories, subcategories, right? Let's set up a category here. If you're using my site, my site is Victor's Bakery. If you're using your site, you can put whatever you want. If you're using my site, again, you can put whatever you want. We just need to create some categories for organization of our products. I will say I'm going to sell a bunch of types of cookies. In a description down at the bottom, we will say something that describes our cookies. And this is going to be, as we get more advanced, concepts of SEO, search engine optimization. I want people to find my site. I want people to find my products. The concepts of SEO then will become important a little later on so that people can do a Google search or a Yahoo search and find us. So this is not just a collection of keywords. This is real sentences with the keywords that describe your product. So when people search on a search engine, they're looking for affordable, you know, um, affordable watches. So if I've got some of those keywords, affordable, watches, low cost, throughout my site, my site could be found by the search engines. That's the very, very, very basic idea of SEO. Once I determine my keywords, what are people searching for? If I put those keywords on my site, it helps people find my site. There's a lot more nuance than that, which we'll cover later. But I will say here, um, natural ingredient, natural ingredient, home, may, home, home style cookies with classic recipes. Just a sentence, <clears throat> a real sentence, a sort of like something that entices people, something that has like convincing people and, and thinking in terms of marketing and commercials and that sort of thing to convince people um, this is something you want. And these are, this has keywords if people are searching for you know, bakeries in San Diego with natural ingredients. Well, I have the keyword natural ingredient in one part of my site. And when people search that through the search engines, my site could appear, along with other techniques, if I've got, for example, keywords and, and that sort of thing. Uh, if I have a photo, I can put a thumbnail. I'll get back to that a little later. Um, on this slug, don't worry about it. This is just an internal name of the product. Just don't worry about it. Just click Add New category at the bottom. On the right side now, I have a new category called cookies. There's a description, there's the slug. I have no products in that category yet. I'm going to make two more categories, cakes and pies. So cakes. Description, I'll do it later. And then pies. I'm going to sell various types of cakes, cookies, and pies. I have zero of those products at the moment. And again, let's say to take advantage of the idea of subcategories. Let's say I want, um, you know, the, the conventional type plus the the low the low sugar type so let's say a new category of low sugar cookies but then I will select parent category of cookies this is a subcategory I'm going to have things that are cookies so they'll have that keyword attached to them but also specifically low sugar so make sure you set the parent as a cookie, and then save it. I can have as many categories as I want. I can have as many subcategories as I want. This is also valuable if you think about it like on Amazon, Amazon.com. I want to buy things there. I'm going to go to a section, electronics, and then a subsection, 
personal computers. And then a sub subsection, personal computers under $500. And then I find my products. If I go to the top category of computers, I have way too many to choose from. If I drill down deeper to under 500, I have specifically what I'm looking for. Same thing here. I want to go look at all the cookies, so it'll also include the low sugar and the, and the conventional. If I only want the low sugar, then it'll only show you those. So categories are important to organize your products, for people to find them, for SEO, uh, for all of those good things. I've got three products, one subproduct, and then our category, I mean. And now let's go over here to add new product. Here then you get something that looks like any other WordPress screen as if I'm creating a page or a post. I have a product name, the title of it. I have an area to write a description. I can write as much as I want. I can write a thousand words if I want. Bullet points, images, etc. I have our product categories on the right. Tags which I won't cover just yet, but they're similar to categories. A thumbnail image for my product, or a gallery. Maybe I want to show seven different photos for my product. A gallery. Then I've got a whole section here, which we'll get into detail. But to just get started, we have a simple product where we can then set a price and a sale price. We can do pretty complex things a little later on, such as linked products. Now, if you, if you buy a cookie, you also need what else to go with that cookie? Milk. So we can also have a product that we're selling milk, but we can link them. If you buy this cookie, why not also buy this little you know, carton of milk? So we can link products together. Yeah, under link. So we've got other advanced things that we'll cover later. Short preview description versus the long description. Just a couple of places to write description, to write content for the concept of SEO, search engine optimization. We teach a whole class focused on SEO. It's CIS 257, I think. And we go into detail there about thinking in terms of marketing and getting found by the search engines and tips and techniques and such. But we'll cover a little bit of it in this class as well. I want to make a cookie here. Chocolate chip. So our classic recipe comes from, and you know, I can fill in stuff later. I want to put the title of the product, a description. I would recommend a short paragraph, three sentences or so. I'll figure out what I want to write a little later. But that, that, that description is important for the person currently on the site to read about your product. And it's also important for people that are not yet on your site. Because again, if I go to Google or Yahoo or Bing or any search engine, and I search for local San Diego shops, or I search for you know Chula Vista bakeries selling cake pops. Well, if I've got those various sentences, keywords, descriptions, and so forth, those are things that could get picked up by the search engines so that they can find me, so that the people find, uh, searching can find you. Categories. Well, obviously, it's a cookie. Um, an item can be in multiple categories, but it doesn't make sense for us at the moment. A cookie is not a cake. So it wouldn't go there. However, let's say I'm selling things like uh, merchandise. So I'm selling t-shirts. I could think of categorizing t-shirts in a variety of ways. Men's styles, women's styles, kids' styles, whatever. A shirt is in those various, ver various categories. So I can have one thing in multiple categories. Everything should be in a category, because if you don't pick it, it's going to be uncategorized. Fail. Question. 
also need to um, click on the parent category as well, or? Technically, you should, because as you see here, when I select this one, it, it is technically only applying that so one. I click yeah, one. so you, you should select them both. Um, it would make sense if you click the subcategory, it also adds the parent category, but it doesn't seem to, so to be safe, I would turn them both on. That way it's categorized in both of those ways. If I suddenly realize at this point I thought of new categories, I have a spot right here where I can create categories. All my categories are listed versus the ones that I might use very often. If I constantly use the same one, if I've got 20 categories and I use three over and over, they'll be under most used. Don't worry about tags for the moment. Product data at the left is a simple product. Um, there's other types, we'll get, it, get to that later. Virtual versus downloadable, and sometimes you get these pop-ups which are nice. So virtual products are intangible and are not shipped. So versus downloadable, they'll have a link to download your chocolate chip cookie recipe PDF, for example. Regular price, chocolate chip cookie. So how much does a cookie cost nowadays? I haven't bought one recently. Ten bucks? It's made out of like gold and emeralds and stuff. No, let's say one dollar. One cookie, one dollar. You could do, this is a pretty cool sale price. Let's say right now this choc the chocolate chip cookie is on sale for 50 cents. So it'll automatically show on the screen the original price crossed out and then the new price focused. And what's even better is this This is something cool they added recently-ish. As I've taught this for years, one thing was that people, what, what would happen is, well, the sale is only this weekend, but I forgot to turn it off, and then Monday comes and I'm still selling it for the wrong price. So we can schedule that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to set that, but we could schedule it from day to day uh, that this product will have a, a sale price. But I'm not going to do any of that just yet. Just a regular price, one dollar. Now, uh, for the demo right now, um, actually, let me check something. Uh, hmm, okay, I guess we don't have any sample pictures. Uh, for the demo here, I want to add a product image. Set, click set set product image here and it says um, upload a file or if you've already previously uploaded a file under the media library it will be listed there we don't have any images and I, and I don't think we've got any images on these computers Do we have any images I don't I don't think we have any so we're going to borrow an image but I'm gonna introduce introduce this website here Let's go to this website on a separate tab, pixabay.com. You can find images all over the internet. You can use this little website called google.com to find any images all over the world. I would not recommend that you go that route using a regular Google search, a regular internet search. I would recommend instead to go to websites where you can actually get free images because most likely an image that you find online is copyrighted. Most likely someone owns it. Someone paid to create the photo, probably, and therefore you don't own the rights to use the image. But I can right click and save. Sure, but that doesn't give you the right to use the image. You know, a tangible thing like my phone, you'll believe that this costs $200 or $500. You'll believe this physical thing has a value. But virtual things have a value. Pictures have a value. Fonts have a value. I've seen official Adobe fonts that cost $2,000. But I can go to a website where I can get 100 free fonts. Yes, but there are also these items that are, that are not for free because they have a value. Someone created them for a purpose. So from Pixabay, this is the place that I recommend that you get images from. And you're not going to get a million results of cookies just like Google. But you're going to get a hundred results that are very, very good. And they're also useful for non... 
they're useful for commercial and non-commercial purposes. Maybe you found an amazing image on Google, but you didn't read the fine print that it says only for non-commercial purposes. And then you downloaded their image and used it on your site where you're selling stuff, a commercial purpose, and you're in violation, and worst case scenario, you get sued. Yeah, you could get sued because you borrow someone else's photo. The correct term is you stole someone else's photo. And I know like with you know our, our current culture of sharing and mashups and all of that, it's a gray area, but to keep you safe, pixaba.com is the best place. P-I-X-A-B-A.com, that's the best place to get images, photos, illustrations, videos. So I will look up chocolate, chip, cookie. I will look up cookie. Hmm, that's funny. I guess this site is just getting more and more popular because um, this is the first time I've ever seen that, that, that the site is acting weird like this. Hmm, that's annoying. I might have to find another site that uh, I can recommend because... Pixels. Pixels? How do you spell it? Pixels? The best free stock photos shared by talented creators. All right, cool. Thank you for that. Let me make a note of that. That might be another cool site to add to your toolbox of safe images. All right, so the point is we want to go find an image. We want to download it. And then we want to add it to our product. So again, I get only 777 photos, but uh, that's fine. I'll probably find the right image that I'm looking for. And let's say I look through all 700 images and I still can't find the perfect image. What's my, what's my next possible solution? Exactly. <laughs> take your own. Get out your phone and take your own or your good camera or whatever. So you might say, well, I can never take a photo like this. One of the things about photography is you, you learn how to do good photography by looking at photos. If I look at this photo and you think, well, how do they actually do it? This is, I know, I know they have a $5,000 camera. No, you could do this kind of photo with your cell phone right out of your pocket. It might not look exactly the same, but the reason you like this photo perhaps is, well, this is a great looking product and it's overflowing and it's nice and chocolatey and there's a little bit of blur and it's on top of a little uh, serving board or something and then there's cloth. I can do a version of these kinds of photos. It's not about, I, I don't have the right camera or the right lens or lights and such. Uh, you can create your own version close enough of a lot of these types of professional photos if you just stop and look at it and and break down the pieces of things like this one over here this is a stack of cookies with a, a tea kettle I guess or coffee carafe or something and a half-eaten cookie which I actually don't kind of, I kind of don't like how it looks but I could do that and put a flower there and I could do something like that something like that something like that that's a close-up how do I do that blur well some of these aspects are, are a little more technical, but uh, that's not so complex there. That's six cookies on a table looking straight down at it with a good amount of light. How many of you have uh, taken any photo classes at Southwestern College? Anyone? A couple of people. Have, how many of you have taken any photo classes? Okay. Good. So it, we have classes here, classes elsewhere. There's YouTube videos that teach you how to become a photo pro as well. So there's everywhere where you can learn. If you can't find the perfect photo, make your own. <coughs> but anyway, all of, that, all of that is to say, find the perfect photo, download it, and then let's add it to our product. I'll go with that. 
So what do we have here? Free download. Um, I guess any size will do. I'll go with small. So I'll save that. That downloaded to the download folder and then back on WooCommerce, I'll go to, <clears throat> I'll go here to add the photo I just downloaded in your downloads folder. On the right side, we have a variety of little boxes to fill in. <clears throat> the one that matters the most is this alt text. Describe the purpose of this image. Leave empty if it's decorative. Um, this photo represents my product. It's important. Alt text is important for modern websites, uh, for them to be compliant, for them to be accessible. Uh, for them to be indexable or found by the search engines. So one simple thing to do that helps a lot is whenever you have any images on your site, you want to describe them. So if this were part of the grading and you put alt text of cookie, you would get a nice D plus. Actually, that's too nice, a nice D. Because this is the minimal of alt text that you can write. It says describe the purpose of the image. For modern websites, for modern SEO, you want to write a short sentence that describes what the photo is. This is part of the stuff that helps you in the search engines. This helps your SEO, this helps your ranking, this helps you get found, this makes your site compliant, this helps your site be accessible. Believe it or not, people that are completely blind can still use websites if they're properly set up. Because, for example, if I'm blind, I probably have a computer that is going to read to me what's on the screen. And when I go to a website, I'm not going to use the mouse because I can't see where to click. But my computer can read to me, and it'll read to me, menu, 24 new emails, link, campus apps, link, G Suite. And I have a keyboard, a special keyboard that I've memorized that I press Control 2 and it'll jump to campus apps. And then when I'm on the new screen, it'll read to me menu, board docs, menu, board objects. And then I navigate via the keyboard. So people that, that have that impairment, they can still go on the web, they can still buy products, they can still use the internet if it's properly set up. The problem comes with images because the computer might read to the person image. But I don't know what that means at all. I can't see the image and the computer just read image. Well, so that we can help people to understand what my photo is, that's the alt text. So that's where I write there, what is that image? And if I just write cookie, well, I can see it's a cookie, but that's not enough because I need to have chocolate chip cookie or a little bit more of a sentence in terms of you know, low sugar chocolate chip cookie or chocolate chip cookie on sale or what else further describes the image for people that can't see it. Chocolate chip cookie one dozen or whatever way I'm trying to explain what the image is. The other ones are less important. The alt text is the one that is important. And if it was being graded, OK, now that's an A. That's an A+. Plus. It is describing a little bit more what the cookie is, what the item, what the photo is, that, that is. And it's a nice a little bit more detailed. And it's a little bit extra work, but it's part of the web design process to add the alt text, the alternative. If people can't view it visually, um, they can view it audio-wise. It can be read to them. This is for accessibility. And for the rest, title is what will appear when you hover your mouse over it. You ever hover over an image and a little pop-up appears to tell you what it is? 
Well, obviously, that's for the visual users of the site. Uh, for the non-visual users, they, they won't quite care. They will care about the alt text. But writing a title is what will appear, what will pop up when you hover over. It could be different. It could be the same. I usually put them the same just to save effort. Caption would be the text that appears on the screen below the photo. It could be the same. And then description is basically for you. Once you've got 40 images in your database here, once you've got 40 products or whatever, 400 products, and you want to find them, you can search for your products in the dashboard, and also by the description. So alt text is the only one that matters, but it's a good idea to fill them all in, and you can make them the same. They have slightly different purposes. After all of that, I can set the product image. Set product image. I've got a product. If I had multiple photos, different close-ups or configurations of my product, I could add them as a gallery. And WooCommerce plus WordPress will automatically create different thumbnails and all that cool stuff. Product description, this is like a short preview text. If I've written like a paragraph under the regular description, I could have a, a quick little blurb, a quick message about what it is down here. And technically you have the full editor here where you can also add a picture here that's kind of over the top. And sometimes people add a picture to their product. You know, they click right here and then they add a picture. But this is different than the thumbnail that appears as a preview over here. You usually want the image, the product image here, you don't want it within the description. I'm just right here for the moment, short description. You can spell it right if you want. And then we will publish it. If we're not ready to publish, obviously we have to save it as a draft. But once your product is ready, you can then publish it. And I want to see what it looks like, so we have to go to the visit site. OK, so again, the site is not designed very much. I haven't really gone in to customize. It looks a little boring. That's fine. I just want to focus on one thing at the moment, which is my brand new shop section. And the shopping. In the catalog, I've got one product so far. I have also built-in sorting and organization. And the thumbnail that I added appears right there. I can add it directly to the cart here. I see the price. Or I can click on the product picture or name to see the details. And then I get a page focused on that one product chocolate chip cookie, there's the price. The short description in this theme would appear here. Depending on your theme, your short or long description appears at different places. I also get a slightly different design for the photo and, oh, this little zoom in feature. So if I've got a big version of the photo, in the old days I had to design a version of my photo that was large size, medium size, small size. Nowadays, with something modern like WordPress, all I need to do is just upload the photo, and it's there on all sizes. And I get this also zoom in like that. I have all of this. Press Escape. This is under the category of cookies. If I had other cookies, they would all appear under cookies. There's the description that I wrote. There's a built-in system of people reviewing your product. That's somewhere in there. We'll get to it later. But I have a description. And then if I add to cart, chocolate chip cookie has been added to your cart. I can go view my cart. I can continue to shop. This particular theme tells you up here, you've got one item in your cart at $1 so far. You can go to my cart screen here or my cart screen here, or I have the ever-present one, 
and you can even hover over it and it'll tell you at a glance what you've got. And also remove them from here, view or check out. So all of this infrastructure comes from this plugin. In the old days, this was very hard to program. There was a lot of setup that you needed to do for all of this functionality that out of the box, yes, we have to go through a wizard, there's still various settings, there's still a lot to set up. But we went through WooCommerce to quickly create an e-commerce product, an e-commerce site, and once I activate Stripe or PayPal or whatever, a person would then be able to go through the whole checkout process and actually buy your product. There's still a lot of nuance to talk about, like shipping and handling and taxing and all of that, and coupons and variations, which we'll get to. But I've got a product here. I've got a shopping cart and so forth. And we'll, we'll get to the part then about um, the in-class grading for the day in a moment. Questions so far? We've, we've gone through it in a way together about installing WooCommerce, adding a product. We still have a lot to look at, but questions, general questions at the moment? Would I, yes? Would this also allow like you buying stuff up to like uh, put the thing on hold? Yes. Yes. If they add to cart, it will stay in the cart. For how long? I have to confirm over here somewhere in the WooCommerce settings. Somewhere here, there is an option about how long to hold on to it in the cart. We have to find it in here somewhere. Products. I. I it might be a day or a week or something inventory somewhere here you know there's a lot of set whole oh here we go hold stock for 60 minutes okay that's interesting so i can change it to days or whatever but for the moment it's set to a, a spot here where it will only hold into your cart for an hour and uh just to find this and we'll get back to it later under your woocommerce settings just to put it in the recording woocommerce settings products inventory you set it here hold stock for x minutes when it's reached the order will be canceled leave blank to disable actually that might be the best thing there keep it in their cart until they are ready to pay question what if you don't want your entire site to have that thing but you just want your store to have so it's kind of you can click on shop and then it kind of has its own little entity okay. like that because I didn't want um, when I first downloaded WooCommerce it changed everything to that thing yeah. I didn't want it so I undid it and now I just have to add each thing mm -hmm. back. This is one of the downsides of WordPress in that when you install a site mm -hmm. every screen has to have the same theme unless you do some advanced child themes and stuff which we'll cover a little bit of. But one way to get around it is you can have the main part of your site as one WordPress installation and then only the shopping cart as a separate one. So that's a little advanced, but the idea is I've got victorsbakery.com. I've installed WordPress with its own database at this level. And then I have a separate database and a separate copy of WordPress installed into a subfolder called shop. And now you've got the root of your site as one design and one set of plugins and features. And then you've got another copy of WordPress in its own folder with its own features for e-commerce. How do you do that online? Like, I can't understand when you're doing that, how you have the other folder. How do you do that just online? Online would be very similar because you've got some sort of service provider, GoDaddy, yeah. Bluehost, uh, mm -hmm. which would you have? Oh, GoDaddy. GoDaddy. So you would be able to, uh, they could walk you through the tech support of GoDaddy, but basically you, you do create a new folder in your, in your server uh, where you're uploading a, another copy of, of the WordPress software. 
and you need to run the installer from that folder which will then attach itself to a new database so you create a second database on your GoDaddy and then connect it all up so you've got one installation of WordPress on the root and you've got another installation in a subfolder through their file manager and everything we might look at it a little one-on-one -on -one, or you can also call call them up and they can help you with so it don't leave it separate. It's still one domain, domain? Yeah, it's but it's two separate sites, technically. But I'm not paying for two sites. Exactly. I'm just one. You're not paying for two. You're paying for that one dot com domain, mm -hmm. but it's in two separate technical sites in two, two separate folders. Folders underneath my main thing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so that leads us into the task for the day. Uh, which is applying uh, what we've talked about here. We're doing this with cookies. Well, you probably care more about it in terms of your site, your products, your, 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 your plan. So in, the, in Canvas, we have a, a 10 point assignment. I'll, I'll look at it here if you want to also look at it. Uh, this is what we need to do for the, for the in-class points. Um, you need to install MAMP, create a database, use Duplicator to resurrect the site. Oh, we've already done that. Check. You need to install WooCommerce and set, set it up a bit. We've already done that. Keep the recommended theme. Uh, for the moment, keep the recommended theme instead of changing it. If you really, 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 really want the other theme, okay, I guess. But um, keep, the, keep the theme that it gives us. And what you'll need to do is change a few things. Change the name of the site. You probably don't want Victor's Bakery. Um, you want your own site. And then you need some products. We made one product together. That one's not going to count because we made it together as cookies. You need your own product, uh, which will need a title, a description, not just gibberish like I wrote, something a little bit more detailed. You will need to have a price, whatever you want, an image, and a category. Well, if you're making your own products, cookies, cakes, and pies won't apply. You need your own categories. You need your product in a category, at least one. You need two products, excluding the one we created together, excluding the category we created together, unless your site really is about baked goods. And um, you have until the end of the class to, to do that. Uh, you call me over and I'll check you off. And basically with this starting point, you can use this starting point that you have right here. If you want to fully challenge yourself, you could create a complete new site and then add what we've done. I would say just start with this and do what you need to. Um, this site here, I'm going to make a copy of it in, with Duplicator so that I can use it again next week. Um, I would recommend you make then a Duplicator copy of your site as we did last week. If you need help, refresher, you can call me for that. But work on the part about adding your own product, products. And then at the end, when you're done with that, make a copy in Duplicator. And then when we come back next time, we'll add more. Uh, more e-commerce features and, and so forth. So that's what the in-class assignment is for the moment. Make sure you're able to do this. Two new products fully fleshed out. Um, call me over and then I'll check you off on that.